academic search engines or scholarly search engines. What do you mean by search engine? What do you mean by search engine? Search engine is like an inquiry counter where you are going and asking for a particular matter, then they will direct us to the source of it. In the same way, we have to search not in simple Googling, but we have to search on academic search engines or scholarly search engines. What I will give you some examples of uh, academic search engines in which you can uh, search for uh, um, writing your paper and or paper or assignment in future. I will give you the list of certain search engines. See, first, first one you all know, that is Google Scholar. Google Scholar is an academic search engine where you will get academic information in specific. We are simply searching on Google, it will give us a lot of results. But Google Scholar is exactly for uh, academic purpose. It will provide us with the journals. It will provide us with the full text journal or the abstract of journals or some bibliographies where you can search for. Uh, this is a specialty of a Google Scholar. This is an academic database. If you are searching for something, uh, for example, in uh, stress and COVID, suppose you are searching for stress and COVID. See, they will give us the articles, the list of articles. Here you can filter since 2020, that was the articles that were published in this year, last year, uh, for from uh, 26 onwards. Um, so at the, at the right side of it, you have got the PDF. When you are clicking on it, they will give us the full text of that particular article. This is a Google Solar search engine. The another one is uh, Microsoft Academic. Microsoft Academics is the counterpart of Google Scholar given by the Microsoft Corporation. I will just show the interface of uh, Microsoft Acad Academics. This Microsoft Academic also gives us with scholarly content alone. See, these are the publications included. These are the authors, topics, conferences, journals, etc. Here you can give the keyword for search. It will provide us with, <clears throat> for example, let us search uh, economic prices in India. And just go back. Just we write over. It will provide us with certain results. See, these are the results we are getting from this. It starts from Articles from 2020, 1924 to 2020, the, the latest ones. By clicking on to it, you can directly go to the article, full text article. Okay, this is the Microsoft Academic Search Engine. It's search engine, not database. It's search engine, academic search engine. And there is another one. The third one I am doing just some examples only. This is base. This is another search engine. Then for the academic search engine. Here also you will get scholarly content. Here we have got advanced research. I will tell you about advanced search in future. Uh, see, here we can filter the information. You need not give a particular, if you are giving a particular one, you can filter it. If it is from, you, are, you want only book, ebooks, uh, click on that, you, that will provide us with only ebook. Then open access resources. You are looking only for open access resources. Uh, this, this will provide you with that. So this is an advanced research. Uh, it's very sophisticated one. This is base. This is also an academic search engine. Then another one. This is core. This is another one. This is the world's largest collection of open access research papers. This is a search engine that will provide us, that will provide exclusively with open access resources, open access journals, open access books, uh, open access videos, etc. It is especially dedicated for providing us with the open access content, that is core. And another, another one is that Semantic Scholar.
This is also an academic search engine. So man this folder. It is a web website that is uh, website says it's search or 60 databases. It's, it, it gives materials from 60 databases. See, you can search this much of papers from all fields of science. So there is, this is another data, uh, this is another search engine, Semantic Scholar. Then another one is there, science.gov. Science.gov. So the website that gives uh, searches over, sorry, um, Okay, this is science.gov. Uh, it is owned by the US Federal Science Agency and we can search on it. It provides mainly with the science subjects. Then moving on to another search engine, Worldwide Science. This is another academic search engine. This is a global science gateway comprised of a uh, national and international scientific databases and the portals. Here also you can search. Okay, this is worldscience.org. Then another one. Another one is RevSig. It is a web search engine for students and researchers that aims to make academic information easily accessible to everyone. This is also an academic search engine where you can search for uh, scholarly content alone, scholarly content exclusively. Then another one. That is Eric. Institute of Education Sciences. It's an online library of uh, education, research, and information sponsored, sponsored by the uh, Institute of Education Sciences of the US Department of Education. It is a government owned search engine for scholarly content. Okay, we shall go to the next one. This is Infotopia, it describes itself as a Google alternative safe search engine. This is also an academic search engine. And the academic search engine, uh, put some, uh, these all are this. And another one, ResearchGate. ResearchGate, you, you, you all may know, I think. Uh, it is more than a search engine. Uh, it is like a um, common forum for researchers where the researchers can share their research um, as other for others for papers and all. You, know, you have to join here, I just jo joining is for free and you have to contribute your papers, then you can get access to uh, the papers written by others also. It is more than a search engine, it's, it's not actually a, an academic search engine. More than that, it is a common platform of researchers where researchers come together and share their ideas and all. So another, uh, so these are all the, uh, Examples. These are some examples of main academic search engines. Then, when we are searching in this academic search engines as well as databases, we need to follow certain techniques. When we are searching in academic search engines as well as uh, databases, what is the difference between an uh, academic search engine and an academic database? What would be the difference between an uh, academic uh, search engine? and an academic database. See, as I have already mentioned, uh, search engine means an uh, inqui inquiry counter. When you are approaching an inquiry counter, they will, they will direct us to particular places where, you, where, where we will get what we, are, we, what we asked for. They will direct us to certain places. We won't, get the, we won't get what we needed from that inquiry counter. Instead, they will direct, direct us to the sources where we will get what we desire. But in the case of uh, uh, academic databases, academic databases are like uh, grocery shops. So you go there and take what you need from this grocery shops or, or, or any, any kind of shops. You just go there and take what you need. 
that is the difference between a uh, search engine and a database in a search engine you it directs you to the source whereas the database provide you with the source that is the difference between database and search engines so in order to search in these both we have to have a, a certain we have to use certain techniques i will uh, show you a video it's a 3 minute long video uh, hardly 3 minutes long video mm. just listen to it just watch it then we will go for further details this is are the basic things we you need you need to understand i'm sorry they don't call it research for nothing finding high quality material on a topic is tough and one major hurdle can be coming up with the right search terms but here's the good news if you can improve your technique in this area your future research projects will be that much easier This video tutorial will equip you with three techniques to get off to a good start and improve your search results. One, determine the key concepts. Two, try synonyms. Three, use one source to lead you to more. When looking for books and articles for your paper, you may end up using all sorts of different databases and research tools. Most of them work on the same basic principles, though. You need to speak their language in order to get the best results. A research database thinks like a computer, not like a person. So, it does not perform as well with phrases using everyday speech. Let's say your research topic is what is the role of exercise in heart health? You may be tempted to put that in a sentence in the search box. Don't do it. Sure, you may get some results, but this is not speaking the language of the database. Instead, Determine the key concepts in your topic. This means dropping terms such as role, relevance, effect, influence, advantages, representation. These words or phrases are not key to your topic and will actually get in the way. Really, your key concepts in this first example are exercise and heart health. Searching using these terms will produce better results. Or with this example. Discuss the representation of women in Shakespeare's Macbeth. The concepts here are women, Shakespeare, and Macbeth. If you seem to be getting too few results or results that are not at all relevant, try thinking of synonyms for your key concepts. Think about how an expert in the field might discuss your topic. For example, a scientist might say cardiovascular instead of heart health. If you're stumped, try a thesaurus for some more ideas. If you're really not getting any results, try and think of a word that expresses your concept in more general terms. For example, a literary scholar might say gender instead of women. Or if you're struggling to find information about the elementary school education in the city of Chicago, try the state of Illinois. Try your search again and see what you come up with. As you've seen so far, this stage of the research process is all experimenting, tweaking, and giving it another go. Allow yourself some time for this trial and error stage. It's worth it. Have you found at least one awesome article or book? Take a break from your research process and give it a closer look. Look at the abstract or introduction. Is there new terminology in there that you can use in future research? Flip to the bibliography or works cited at the end. This can be a great source for other books and articles on the topic. In fact, this is how your professors do. For more information on finding an article and you've got the reference, check out our video on the citation note. If you're looking at an item in a database, look for a listing of the subjects or keywords. These are usually clickable and might send you to a whole new list of possibly relevant materials. This is really learning to speak the language of the database. There you have it. With these three techniques in hand, you'll be off to a much stronger start with your research. And remember, you can always ask us for help. okay these are the basic techniques you have to follow when you are when you start searching in academic databases as well as academic search engines okay then we go on to certain other techniques which we can use in uh, searching first one is boolean logic when you are entering key terms uh, we, are, we have seen in the video that we have to 
enter the key we have to identify the key terms then we have to enter the key terms see when we are entering key terms we can insert boolean operators to get better results when we are entering the keywords we can use boolean operators to get better results there are three types of boolean operators first one is and then or then not what is the purpose of entering inserting and between the key terms and combines search terms so that each search result contains all of the terms and combines search terms so that each search result contains all of the terms for example you want to know about how to travel in euro so what are the key terms how to travel in euro uh, or the importance of traveling in euro or the guide to travel in euro so what are the key terms key terms are travel and euro so when you are enter when you are entering these two terms you have to get the results that shows both these key terms both travel and euro that is your output your search result should contain both travel and euro then what will you do you will put this boolean law boolean operator and in between them travel and euro then you will get results that contains both travel and euro and the second boolean operator is or it combines search terms so that each search result contains at least one of the terms for example you are searching about uh, um, college or university you, you need to know only about either college or university then you can insert college in capital letters or university then in the search results the search results will contain either college or university that is a important that is a speciality of the boolean operator or then there is another one not not actually excludes terms so that each search result does not contain any of the terms that follow it for example uh, television we have uh, television and the cable television so you need to omit this when you are searching for cable television naturally this cable television also will come up so what do you want to do you have to you need to omit this cable so how will you enter it television in capital letters not then cable tv so then in the search result the cable television will not be visible or will not be uh, uh, present that is the importance of a not not boolean operator so and you san if you want to narrow a search so that all words appear in your result uh, example is exercise and health the result will have both the exercise and health then or or if you want to expand a search so that any one of your words appear in your in your result sir salary or income so the results will have either salary or results in the then not use not when you want to narrow a search by excluding a word in your in, in your in your results so bears not greasy okay i think you have understood it then there is another uh, technique that is using truncation truncation means so there are certain there are certain terms uh, if you are entering only government the results will contain only the words that is government suppose if you want to include the uh, in the search result governments or governmental etc you have to add an asterisk sign so the search result will produce us with the uh, keywords that that include governments and the government same is the case of promote if you want to uh, have the results of uh, promote promoting promoted etc you have to put truncation that is promote and then an asterisk sign is to be included in the search box that is called a truncation it helps you search for a word that has multiple endings if a word has got multiple endings you have to include truncation that is an asterisk sign at the end of the word then another one is wild card symbols wild card symbols are of two types there are two types of wild card symbols first one is asterisk wild card it is used between words where variations may be possible so uh, responsibility budgeting it can return results such as responsibility centered budgeting or responsibility centered budgeting see if you are just entering responsibility and budgeting it will provide us with only only results that contain these two terms 
so if you want to include some other terms in between put an asterisk sign in between that it will give us results with a responsibility center budgeting or responsibility center budgeting the second wild card symbol is question mark wild card it is used to replace an unknown character for example uh, woman or women women or woman instead of that e place w o and question mark then n will return results of uh, both women and women also search for color the color has got uh, two types of uh, spellings in american uh, english and british english so you want to include both this uh, you want to get the results of both this then you will include an a question mark in between c o l o question mark r it will it will return both color and colors in your results then there is one called nesting is if a, if a topic will have a different variations like uh, if it, see we need to there are certain topics that have got different variations like a teenager teenager can be said as youth teens young adults etc uh, also another example is higher education higher education can be said as post secondary education college education university education etc suppose you want to include all these things in your search what will you do you will do searching sorry nesting nesting is used to combine all these key terms in your search for this nesting uses parentheses that is brackets to keep concepts that are alike these concepts are to be uh, put alike and given for search so example is given if you want to search for teenage depression what will you do in your in your results you want to include not only this particular teenage but also you have to include youth teens young adults etc so what will you do you will put in brackets and include a boolean operator teenager or teen or adolescent or youth or young adult so the results will have all these elements either of these elements in connection with the depression and then close the bracket put an and that is also another boolean operator then depression okay i think you got the uh, this one the, uh, another one is face search see in this one young adult in young adult we have written it in uh, quotation marks why it is a phrase if you want to search for a phrase together we need to have a specific quotation marks uh, uh, above that that is face search these are the major basic uh, techniques that you are using in a search engines and as well as academic search engines as well as academic databases then i think uh, we can go on go to uh, research database open accessible research databases these are all about uh, uh, search techniques let me check whether i'll be able to get access to so today we have seen uh, what are you know, is not getting uh, let me shift to another screen i think there you will get i'm using another screen see today we have seen at first what are the search techniques Uh, then we have seen this academic search engines there some ex examples of uh, academic search engines then we have seen some techniques which are to be used in exclusively in academic search engines as well as academic databases okay now we are going to see some major academic databases that provides us with a uh, solid content solid scholarly material and the most accessible one in this regard is the uh, elnis database i'm sharing this screen i think uh, you can see this can you see my screen can you see my screen if you can could you please type an s can you can you see the screen is it visible okay 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 see 
this is a consortium enlis is a consortium it provides us with a group of databases enlis is a consortium that provides us with a group of databases and it is accessible in our college that is why i am telling about this at first this is a database consortium in a sense it's a database consortium it provides us with a uh, different database that provides journals as well as electronic books so how to enter into this you will get a password a, a user id and password from the enlis administrator of your college just enter who is the enlis administrator of your college and ask him from from that administrator you will get a user id and password and using that user id and password enter login now you are in the enlis consortium this we this enlis consists of this much of databases these databases provides us with the e journals and these databases provides us with the electronic books electronic books free electronic books i will just show you some some of the major databases from where you can get uh, resources first one is a uh, indian journals see this is a uh, indian journals database this is a database that provide us with the journal content full text journals we will get full text journals from this particular database that is included in the enlis consortium it takes a so it takes some time to get uploaded okay it's coming see these are the boolean operators and or not using this you can search in the search boxes with keywords that's why i said these techniques are used mainly in academic databases and academic search engines okay here you can select the fields topic or the publication city or publication etc okay let that be there come to the bottom of this this particular database consists of 341 journals in 24 subjects this particular database consists of 341 journals in 24 subjects first we shall look on to the subject Subject are arranged in subjects are arranged in alphabetical order. For example, we will go in uh, business economics and management. There are 56 journals, and in commerce, banking, and finance, there are six journals. Just we shall go, look on to the, the first one: business economics and management. In this subject, there are 56 journals. See, the name of the journals are given here. Together with that, you can see archive available. There is a tag called archive available. That means Together with the, the current issue of this particular journal, they provide us with the back warnings, back issues of the same. And here it is said as UGC approved. So this particular journal is approved by the UGC. It is in the UGC care list or it is included in the UGC care list. Let us take uh, one of a focus journal of, uh, uh, no, this one, IMS Journal of Management Science. It has got an archival access. That is why I chose that. This is the current issue. If you click on to that, it provides us with the articles in the current issue. These are the articles that is present in the current issue. This current issue is a 20, 2020 volume 11, issue 1, January, April. So we shall select one. I, I want to read this article. Click on to that. It gives the details, citation details, then abstract, then there is a tag called PDF. This is the full text channel. You can read it and you can download it. Here you can download it. Clicking onto this, you can download it. This is a full text channel. Okay. We shall move back. See, this is a page. Here we have the current issue archive issues archive issues in my means back volumes back volumes of the same see from 2010 onwards they have given if i want to read something from 2009 there are two issues i can select each or any one of this and read the article contained in this then there are other guidelines other guidelines are for submitting 
our own articles to this particular journal. So we need to read the other guidelines, and as per the other guidelines, prepare an article and submit here. Click on this, and some, there is an option to upload your article and submit here. This is it. Let's move on to the uh, first page. Okay. Then there is we can uh, look the journals as per the alphabetical order. Okay, here are the journals. We shall go to the next one. Another, I'm sorry, I just closed it. Okay, another one is JSTOR. JSTOR is also uh, an international search uh, um, database. If you want to purchase it, it costs a lot. But Enlist provides us through their consortium. So here also we can search something. Uh, what do we need to search? Uh, suppose marketing. It provides us with the articles. Here also you have got filters. If you want specifically to search on journal, click on that. Then the publication uh, place from uh, this year to this year, if you want from a specific year to that specific year, uh, enter the uh, year out there, then uh, you can specific on the, uh, directly go to the subject area, select this. So these are the filters. From here, you can download the PDF of these each articles. This is the database, uh, just store database. Then coming to uh, your economic and political weekly, is usually we are subscribing it you can get the e content of the same from this one then oxford university press provides both uh, uh, electronic journals as well as electronic books okay this hh wilson means ebsco host database ebsco host database also provides us with the um, electronic journals as well as electronic books then cambridge university press also gives us with the electronic journals then here are the databases that provides us with the electronic books. So I don't, I think I don't have to go to each and every one of this. Uh, it's, it's, it's already known. You, you may just uh, go on searching in this. You will get a lot of results. This is a course. Uh, click on this, then you will get the results. See, these are the databases provided by Enlist, and it is freely accessible. You just need to go to your college Enlist administrator. He or she will provide you with the user ID and password. And using that user ID and password, just click, um, in, just uh, search Enlist or Enlist.infletnet.ac.in. Then it will provide, it will directly lead you to this website. And there is a, a login option. And log here, uh, there is a login option here and using this you can log on to this search engine there is another one called epg Padashala at the bottom of it epg Padashala provides us with course content if you want to uh, search the pg or ug level course content of uh, your subject you can get it from this epg Padashala. see here are the subjects for example take the comma subject Here you have the purpose in the commas, for example, take accounting theory and practice. Then there are the modules. These are the modules includes in this particular paper. Select any one of this accounting theory, nature and scope. See, they, gives the, they give the PDF of it. It will, it will take some time to come. Here you can see the PDF version of the note. From the here you can download the note, okay. Here you can download the note and use it for your purpose. And these notes are uh, prepared by famous scholars uh, from our country. Uh, so it's, these are the most authentic notes you can find it in the uh, government websites and all. Okay. This is EPG Parshala. This is also a venture of the uh, MHRD of Government of India. 
NLIS is also uh, a venture of the MHRD of the Government of India. Okay, this is all about NLIS resources. And there are a lot of open accessible journals and open, open accessible books in the uh, internet. Uh, I have, uh, I shall show you a place where you can access it. Uh, I have created a portal in our college that is, uh, it's, it's titled as uh, assumptionportal.com. For this purpose, I shall just stop this presentation and go to this. Okay, this is a portal I have created uh, in our college that is assumptionportal.com. From this portal, you can have access to different websites that provide us with the uh, open access electronic books. Click on to here. This is a list of open access electronic books. Each of these are links to their website and from there you can get access to a lot of electronic books. Um, there is a link to National Digital Library. Uh, then there is a link to PDF Drive. Uh, then there is a link to online books and online economic text. text. Uh, let us come. This is National Digital Library. See, for example, if you want, you have to log in here. You have to register here and log in here. Uh, so I will show you an example. This is National Digital Library. Uh, search on humanities or economics. So you want to have a video lecture on uh, uh, microeconomics, then you will go to another page. You, here you can select the module. Law of supply and elastic supply. Here, see, here is a video of the tutorial. You can play it and listen to that. This is from National Digital Library. Okay. And uh, this is online economics textbooks. From here, we can download these books. So like that, a, a lot of uh, website that, that we provide you is, uh, with a course of uh, course and course of electronic uh, books. Then another one is that uh, open access electronic journals. See, this is arranged in subject wise. For example, in commerce and management, if you click on this, these are the links to open access electronic journals. From each of this, you can go to the website of original website of this, and from there you can download open access electronic journals and articles. Okay. Then there are e-thesis. E-thesis is provided by different uh, universities and different times and all. Um, there is one called the Show the Ganga. Show the Ganga is owned by uh, UGC, it is a um, national level reservoir of uh, doctoral theses. All the theses that are produced in our country are uploaded in the Shodagenga and you can have access to them, including the PhD thesis of uh, some of our teachers. That is Shodagenga. And there are other ones. The MGU thesis means uh, here is an MGU thesis somewhere here. Okay. MGU thesis means uh, they provide us with the, all the PhD thesis that are presented in our university, MG University. And uh, Dudi is uh, uh, the, uh, the digital repository of a Cochin University, Kusat. Takes some time to upload. So this is the repository of e thesis. Then we have um, another one is government data. In this, it is important open government data platform. So this is this is also a venture of a government of india uh, this provides us with uh, statistical data of different aspects you can search here they will provide us with the uh, statistical data okay for uh, regarding economy uh, gross domestic the domestic product current price so they will give, provide us with a graphical representation of the same since some error has happened it's not coming Okay, that is open government data, then government portal, web portal of government of Kerala, uh, national portal of India. National portal of India provides with all the information regarding our nation. So I'm sorry, it's not coming. 
this is your for the ganga the reservoir of indian thesis that is the tag line the reservoir of indian thesis all the phd thesis that are produced in the our country are uploaded into this or the ganga and we can download it from here uh, just search here for some library science if i am searching here all the thesis submit phd thesis submitted in the subject of library science will be listed and we can have access to it we can download it we can read it and we can use it okay that is it so these are the list of uh, uh, that uh, the thesis that were submitted in this year uploaded and submitted in this year okay that is sure again then these are the government data then there is course contents course contents means uh, I, i have already noted that epg padashala e gyan course is a website that provides us with the uh, course notes of uh, this uh, indira gandhi open university and there is vidya mitra vidya mitra is also a venture of uh, mhrd then another one is uh, career websites are there um, you want to get uh, of oh, these all are, i think it's oh, okay then there is an open online courses websites these are the uh, different websites that provide us with the massive open online courses uh, coursera you already know edx you already know uh, can academy you already know these are the these are some of the um mooc providers massive open online uh, course providers and uh, you can access you have access to swayam uh, from here this, this is a direct access to enlist and you can have access to uh, swayam for the swayam is a, so this is a mooc platform which is widely used in colleges around uh, india i think you all know about what is swayam so I, i i'm not going specifically into that so i think i can uh, stop here this all what i wanted to uh, just show you and tell you uh, thank you for your patient listening uh, over to the college hello hello sir sir nobody is responding hello ah hello i think uh, the session is over is it is yeah. over so uh, sir, sir uh, whether we can we can have access to this uh, assumption knowledge portal definitely definitely it's open to all it's open to all okay. and if you have any any queries or something you can uh, just contact me uh, i will just type my email address in the chat box if you have any any questions regarding this you can uh, contact me i can provide with what I, what all i know thank you thank you very much Yeah, this and this and this is very usable huh? and this is very user friendly and usable uh, i i request you all to have a an account of it and uh, have access to this it, it, it's easily available readily available and freely available user friendly at all i, I don't so know if you uh, uh, can have any queries you can now uh, ask father if you have anything to ask you can just uh, ask uh, by unmuting or you can type it on the chat box regarding referencing and all see uh, referencing you will get almost all the materials from this particular website i mean the apa uh, dot org and if you want you can buy this uh, book also this book also will provide you with the uh, details it is a bit costly it, it costs uh, around uh, uh, 1650 uh, there is no need of buying the whole book uh, tell your department or uh, college agree to buy some of the copies and you can have access to that or simply you can go to the website and uh, know the details okay nothing to ask okay if uh, there is nothing if to ask if anybody have any queries you can now ask directly to father tinju See, uh, feedback from us. You want to chat first? Can we feel? Okay. Yeah. Uh, MG University is using Urkun, while many others are using Turnitin. How are they different? Which one is better? See, um, I would say Turnitin is better. 
because because it has got a wider database than the urkund uh, the university has got urkund because it is more cheap than the trinity trinity costs around 5 lakhs uh, five and a half lakhs uh, for annum per annum uh, urkund won't cost that much uh, when i was in sp college uh, we have encouraged for this but it, it costs that much uh, we didn't buy it. Uh, for the last whole month we had access to uh, a trial version of trinity in our college both in Ass assumption and sp since the trial version was expired now we don't have access to it otherwise i would have a uh, just have a demonstration of the same in in our sessions but in the universities and uh, in, in all, almost all the universities it's mandatory that they should have some type of uh, plagiarism detection software i i i think i have answered to that is possible to download the latest version of api manual it's not at all possible to download the api version of a uh, api manual uh, you have to buy it uh, instead you can go to the website as i have shown you you can go to the api.org website almost all the details you will get from that particular one that particular website itself blue Blue book site. I didn't understand that actually. What do you mean by this blue book? Ah, uh, uh, okay. Yeah, am I audible? Yeah, yes, of course. More than audible. Yeah, okay. Uh, can you explain what is blue book citation? No, I didn't understand what is blue book. What do you mean by blue book? Yeah, uh, last month I uh, submitted a research paper and i was instructed to do the uh, like references in blue book citation according to blue book citation it was something yeah, related to uh, it may i be did one of the manuals like uh, chicago apa um, mla and all uh, since i have been referred to that particular citation manual i don't know exactly uh, if you want i will uh, check and let you know later yeah okay thank you for that so i have just referred only MLA and uh, APA in my researches. I haven't even gone to gone through Chicago or any other citation manuals. So I haven't gone to this blue book too. If it is a citation manual at all. See what it, it may <clears throat> uh, maybe an institution is uh, basing on APA or MLA. Even that that particular institution itself can uh, make some variations. It is up to the institution where you have to submit the paper to give correct guidance regarding that. It is not necessary that we have to follow compulsory or it's not hard and fast rules. The institution uh, where you have to submit, where you submit your papers can decide on the guidelines. Uh, would you share the material lead? So of course, of course, of course. Um, if you give me, if you just, um, Send me a message. I can reply you that with all the materials I have used. I have given my uh, email address in the chat box, and you may just give me a mail. I can reply to that. I think uh, now we can wind up. Yeah. Vanessa, can you have a small? Vanessa, can you have a small water? Thanks. Okay, I think uh, it's high time that we finish because we started almost an hour before and it is 3.24. And thank you very much uh, to Joey sir for inviting me and uh, it was a pleasure being with you. It is also a time for me to give some, make some research and all. Thank you very much for your participation. Thank you very much for your cooperation. Uh, respected uh, resource person, respected Joey sir and my dear participants, uh, Plagiarism is really hard, uh, say, hard nut to crack. But, respect Father, you have proved that it is easy to crack the nut uh, through your session. Your session was really interesting, was really useful. On behalf of the coordinators, actually, the initiative was taken by the Department of Economics. We just uh, participated or uh, supported them. Uh, let me take this opportunity to extend on behalf of the organizers our grateful thanks to our resource person our father Tinju one thank you our father uh, thank you for your uh, beautiful session useful session 
thank you once again joy sir for your for the initiative you have taken to organize a meeting like this uh, actually the session was attended by around uh, 60 uh, students from different uh, segments research scholars mphil scholars students from commerce economics departments and some research uh, scholars from outside saint berkman's college let me take this opportunity to thank all the participants i think we may organize this kind of programs in the coming future father once again thank you thank, thank you, you participants thank you, thank for you. your active participation in the session thank you thank you thank you minister now the participants can leave the forum
क्या बटोरी
ഞാൻ ആവറിയുള്ളവരുടെ പാല് മുട്ടി
Wow, what do you want? 